Okay, people, it is time to cringe along with me, your favorite YouTuber. I hope that I'm your favorite YouTuber. If I'm not your favorite YouTuber, after this video, I'm pretty sure I will be. What we're going to talk about today is the most cringe songs ever recorded. And dig in, people. Get some snacks. Make sure you're hydrated. This is going to be intense, people. Buckle up. It's time for some cringe. Let's start with someone you know. You knew this was going to be on the list. The first song on our list of the most cringe songs of all time is uh, Bewitched by Blood on the Dance Floor from back in uh, 2011. But it feels like this should have been from 2008. Whoa. Oh my God. This is Sleep Token. We found out the secret identities of Sleep Token, people. Breaking news. Sleep Token. And blood on the dance floor, same thing. I might have to tweet about this. I want to just like find a picture of him that looks sleep tokeny and tweet it with sleep token, but people are going to get mad because sleep token stands are really quick. Before we go any further, have you checked out my Patreon? Patrons get early access to all my main channel videos and my podcasts. I also do giveaways sometimes. For example, I just gave away a pair of these Eargasm earplugs. And if you want me to review your music, there's a way to do that as well. All you got to do is join at the $10 and up level. Then every month I do a call for submissions. If you want me to review something, all you got to do is drop it in the comments of that post then i will review it live on twitch and post it on patreon for everyone to see so if that sounds cool hit the link in the description of this video and i appreciate your support and for those who don't know this guy is alleged to be a predator um you can go look it up uh it's pretty creepy stuff not a good person at all he's not alleged as far as i know he's never been convicted of anything um but uh definitely definitely a creep I remember their music being bad, um, but to be honest, uh, I didn't remember it being this bad. This is even worse than I remembered. What is going on here? Is this uh, a silhouette of some humping? What is... I don't know what's going on here. Oh, this is the other guy. Okay, yeah, that this guy's not the alleged predator. I feel like they thought this was going to be their big, like, epic song that you know, got everyone into the band. They, this is, there's so many layers of lore and meaning to this song. Like they thought this was going to be their big breakthrough. The song is much worse than I remember. Yeah, they're magnum opus, exactly. It looks like they're on like uh, what, a carousel here, like at some fairgrounds or something. Imagine going to the fairgrounds with your kids and you see these guys filming a music video on the carousel. Uh, this song is horrible. I was expecting this to be like some kind of a up-tempo banger, but it's actually just really boring. It feels like the song never started. And here, here's Sleep Token again. There it is, people. Confirmed the secret identities of Sleep Token. I want to know what the lore Bible for this was. You know, whenever they make a movie, there's like someone whose job is to maintain the lore Bible to make sure that everything's consistent. So if it's like, oh, what kind of shoes should Hermione wear? You know, the, the keeper of the lore opens up the lore Bible and like, oh, well, Hermione, you know, her left leg is a quarter inch shorter than her right one. So we have to make sure blah, blah, blah. I want to know who is like the lore master for blood on the dance floor. I feel like they must have had that person on set. And imagine like making out with this guy. Like it's so weird seeing him just like out in the desert, you know? Imagine you meet this guy and he picks you up on the first date and it's he looks like Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. This is where Davi Vanity got his aesthetic from. The final boss of Final Fantasy VI. I need is one star in the sky. <laughs> For some reason, the idea of like getting into this RV is really funny to me. Like, I, I feel like this RV, it looks like something that, you know, your aunt and uncle would live in. Oh, we sold our house and we bought this RV and we're just driving around the country. For some reason, it looks so out of place to, uh, to have an RV in this video. Pro tip, if Davi Vanity leads you to a van in the desert, don't get in. <laughs> That's my number one piece of advice. Anytime there's a van and Davi Vanity in the same place, just 
run. Run and call 911. I don't know what's going on in this video. Somebody find the lore master for the blood on the dance floor video and tell me what was going on here. All I know, cringe level 9,000. Um, actually, even worse than I thought somehow. Um, and I remember this being really bad. And somehow this was even worse than I thought. Okay, well, next up on our list, a deep cut that you may or may not be aware of. This is by Brian Hayner Sr. This is called Arizona. And for anybody who is not familiar, Brian Hayner Sr., better known as Papa Gates, this is Sinister Gates from Avenged Sevenfold. This is his dad. His dad does like guitar comedy. Uh, actually a very good guitarist. And uh, let's just say he's not a big fan of Hillary Clinton which is uh, what this song is about. Yeah, the guitar guy from Jeff Dunham. That's right, that's Papa Gates. So this song is about his beef with Hillary Clinton. That's right, a lot of desert cringe. Okay, we'll play guitar for food. And I like, you can see already, he must have borrowed Brian Jr.'s Affliction shirt for this video. Times are tough in my hometown Unemployment's up, the economy's down so There's a place I know okay. where there's gonna be jobs real soon Okay, so things are tough on Huntington Beach and uh, Papa Gates is thinking about moving I'm gonna move to Arizona Moving to Arizona Where they enforce the law Where they enforce the law I'll be a bricklaying son of a bitch when they build that wall When they build the wall is this new? No, this is from uh, 2012. He looks like the Papa John's guy. He does. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Papa Gates getting pulled over. Look at his seat covers. He's got the seat covers of like a hot, trashy Y2K bimbo that works at a tanning salon. If she drives like a, a Chevy Alero and she's got these seat covers... You know she fucks. You know she does butt stuff. Kind of weird that Sinister Gates' dad has the seat covers that make me think about bimbos that do butt stuff. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> Look at this. I might piss off Hillary Clinton or the president of Mexico. The cop pulled him over, but uh, all he found was a copy of the Declaration of Independence taped to the steering wheel with a note that says, you might want to read this. God bless Arizona. There it is. That's where I want to go. Gonna move to Arizona. If you didn't have Papa Gates playing a guitar solo on top of the minivan in your bingo card, well, you're going to wish you did because that is exactly what you got, people, right there. God He's moving to Arizona, people. You know, in Arizona, there's still a few people who believe in something you guys might have heard of called freedom. Huh? Ever heard of that? Ever heard of a place called the United States of America where man can be free to do what he wants? Ever heard of that? I didn't think so, Hillary Clinton. Well, let me just say, Obama, Hillary, not welcome here in Arizona. Me and Papa Gates, we'll be there getting our freedom on. If he was like this before Trump, I can't imagine what he turned into after. That's that's what I want to know. <laughs> okay, well, there it is. The second uh, song in our Cringe Hall of Fame. Next up, we've got a 2015 banger, Drill Time by Slim Jesus. Anybody remember this one? All props used in this video that show resemblance to any illegal materials are merely props and should not be taken seriously. Don't try this at home. Okay. See, Slim Jesus cares about your safety. Slim Jesus walked so BLP kosher could run. Yes. Slim Jesus in the cut. Boom, 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 boom. Caillou about to slide on you. I pull up and you're black at night wearing all black and let that 40 bang. I fucked your girl and I ain't even try it. I not ironically though, this beat is fucking awesome. I think he bought it from someone for like 50 bucks or something. The, the beat actually is really good. It's a great beat. A 30 clip and I call that bitch my fucking mom. I paid 350 for a Finney belt and that double F hold up my I appreciate how honest he was about this being all BS in an interview. That was the best part. So he's from Hamilton, Ohio, which is like a suburb of Cincinnati that actually is is shitty like Hamilton is actually rough and I saw him and I was like you know he might be really about it because there are plenty of people like this in Ohio there are like a lot of like skinny like 
hood white people there that will shoot you in the face in Ohio. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I lived in Cincinnati for seven years. I saw a lot of people like that. And I was like, I don't know, maybe he's about it. So he went on uh, DJ Vlad and DJ Vlad asked him like, so, you know, are you about that life? And he was like, nah, man, and Vlad's like, so when you're like, uh, you know, you're talking about guns and like, you know, being a driller and all that stuff, like you, you, you don't do any of that. And he's like, nah, well, why do you write songs about it? He's like, cause it sounds cool. <laughs> I was like, yeah, all right, fair enough. It does kind of sound cool. <laughs> it's like, nah, man, I'm not about that. I just rap about it cause it sounds cool. If I catch you lacking, better pray to God that my shit jam. But if if I catch you lacking, I'll better pray to God my shit day. jam. Yeah, it really is the most Chad take. Exactly. Super Chad. Just be like, nah, man, it's all cap. All cap. It is a great beat though. Um, I actually, I really do miss this era of drill. You know, this is like old school, like Chief Keef style drill, you know? I feel like when like the Brooklyn and Bronx drill came around and stuff, I don't know. Just give me, give me some old school Love Sosa drill. Bring back Slim Jesus, people. Slim Jesus is the only one who can save our nation. The only one. Bring him back. We didn't know how good we had it. Back in 2015, we didn't know. We didn't know. Okay, next up. I hope you didn't think you were done cringing because we're just warming up. Next up, we have a good one. Too Close by Next. Do you guys remember this one? If you know the uh, Why You Lion meme, this is the origin of the Why You Lion meme. Right now. Hmm. These lyrics are something yeah. else. Come on, don't stop now. Yeah. So this song, for anybody who doesn't know, this song is about having a boner. Like, you know, at the, uh, you know, maybe like the ninth grade dance, when you uh, slow dance with a girl and slow dance in ninth grade means you just put your arms around each other and like sway back and forth. This is the soundtrack and you can't help it. You're like, uh oh, oh no, oh no, I'm getting a boner. Uh oh, back away, back away. <laughs> Danger! Step back, you're dancing kind of close. I feel a little poke coming through on you. <laughs> sexing as a verb is cringe. Now, it's great. We got to bring that one back. Sexing. It's been a long time. You know, I've been married for quite a while. My wife and I have been together for 10 years. So my my game is weak. But I, I feel like if I was if I was single again, I feel like the right move would be to text a girl and be like, I wish I wish we was sexing right now. You up? I you may call this cringe. I call this poetry. I call this poetry. Right? What happened to lyrics like this? Next up, speaking of sexing, this is art. Speaking of sexing, this is kind of a deep cut. Get Down by B44, which is uh, an obscure Canadian boy band that I had to look to see if this was a joke or not, because I thought this was like some kind of like Andy Samberg skit or something like that. Turns out it was real and uh, popular in Canada, apparently. So Canada, you got some explaining to do. the plot of this video this kid finds this magic viewfinder in the trash and oh my god it's nightmare vision <laughs> he looks in the magic viewfinder and he sees this weird orange oompa loompa in there ah they're nightmare goggles take them off <laughs> take why are they all orange here come the babes Look at these guys. This is my new aesthetic. I swear to God, I had to look and see if this was a joke because even by the standards of late 90s boy bands, I, I, I honestly thought this was like some SNL skit or something. It's all too real. I like the double tank top here. Um, they're all wearing one white tank top underneath with a colored tank top on top, which I like. This reminds me of like, you know, the, uh, the soccer mom like dropping her kids off at school. She's too busy to like really get dressed. And it's like, you know, 90 degrees out kind of humid. She's like, oh, fuck it. I'm not even gonna wear a bra today. Just put on two tank tops. This is her vibe. Same hair also. Same hair as like the, the Karen Milf down the street. If you get down on me, I'll get down on you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think what he's trying to say is 
if you put your mouth on my PP, then I will put my mouth on your PP. And uh, I, I don't like the sound of that at all. Mouths and peepees should never, ever come in contact with each other, people. That's where your wee wee comes from. You do not want wee wee in your mouth. So, young man, get your mouth off her pee pee. And young lady, don't ever, ever, ever put a pee pee in your mouth. It's unsanitary, it's unchristian, and frankly, it's just vulgar. And I don't see why we need to talk about it. I want to know exactly what to do. This is, wait a minute, wait a minute. This kid, he's getting with all the babes that they want to be sexing. Pretty catchy song, actually. What I love is that this was like a major label band. They had budget. They could have done anything they wanted with hair and makeup and wardrobe and stuff. And, uh, and this is what they came up with. Let's paint you all orange and just like smear a bunch of hair. They didn't even get like spiky, just like smear their hair around. Give you all identical puka shell necklaces and paint you deep orange. That's, I don't know. It's the best we can do. <laughs> it's the best we can do. By the way, I had this exact hair in 1997. When I was 18 years old, I had this exact hair of these two guys here, like bleached and not even like spiked in a cool way, just like a fucking handful of gel in my hair every day. I had this exact hair at that time. And you know what, damn it? If I still had enough hair, I'd bring it back today. Damn it. Oh, the rain dance sequence. You gotta have a dance sequence in the rain. No pressure to go all the way. See, you know, I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. As, as you guys know, this is a Christian channel, a family-friendly Christian channel. He said, there's no pressure to go all the way. I like that. He said, you know, if you don't want to go all the way, that's okay. We can just do we can just do mouth stuff. You know that I love you very much, and you know that I would really like to take our relationship to the next level. And, uh, and I also know that you wanted to preserve your virginity. I deeply respect that. I just, I think that is so awesome and amazing. And I really respect how committed you are to being a virgin. So I was just thinking, you know, maybe if we, if we did butt stuff, technically you would still be a virgin and that way we could still take our relationship to the next level. And just, I mean, I, it's just something I was thinking, if you don't want to do it, like, it's totally fine. But I was just thinking of you cause like, I know how much you value our relationship and I just thought you might like, okay, no. Oh, okay. Well, listen, if you ever change your mind, I, I'm pretty sure that that doesn't count. These guys also look like they're like 30, which is really weird. I swear this is an SNL skit. This kid dunking on everyone. There it is. Okay. Well, if you ever have any questions about getting down, then this is the place to go. If you've ever wondered what it's like to get down, Ask B44 because uh, they know. They know. The last song in our countdown of the most cringe songs of all time. I'm warning you people, if you weren't ready to cringe, if you didn't come prepared to cringe, you're in the wrong place. And uh, get ready because this one's rough. We Are All Gonna Make It by Randy Zuckerberg. And if you're wondering, Randy Zuckerberg, who who is that? This is Mark Zuckerberg's sister. And this song is... Uh, <laughs> This song is about how we're all going to get rich off of crypto. I'm not making it up. This song is about how we're all going to get rich off of Bitcoin. This is it by Randy Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg's sister. Oh, and by the way, it's a cover of uh, We're Not Gonna Take It by Twisted Sister. Twisted Sister, but it's about Bitcoin. And it's Randy Zuckerberg. And it. NFTs. Look, <laughs> this aged really well. She's got her NFT whale shirt. That sure aged well, didn't it? <laughs> We're all gonna make it, oh no, and it's not a parody. She's dead serious. Imagine hanging out in a room where half a dozen people are gassing this up. They're all like, oh yeah, no, Randy, this is this is fire. No, this is absolute fire, Randy. Uh, this is lit AF. Absolutely. I think uh, this this is dope. The kids are gonna love this. This is uh, this is hella dope. Randy, incredibly dope. Um, by the way, I just I just want to make sure that uh, that uh, you got my proposal and you know that I'm billing you four hundred dollars an hour. For oh, you do. OK, great, great. Uh, anyway, like I was saying, Randy, absolute fire. This is this is heat, Randy. The streets are going to lose it when you drop this heat. 
D-Y-O-R and pick a coin. Music peaked. That's right. It's all been downhill since this. I bet you they spent like $2 million on this video too because they know that her budget is unlimited and she probably has no idea how much it costs to make a music video. So they're like, uh, yeah, it's going to be like uh, two, two million dollars probably. Two, two million? She's like, yeah, okay, yeah. Just as long as we can get it done by next week. Yeah, well, if you want it done by next week, it's going to be a, a rush fee. It's going to be two and a half million. Oh, yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, that sounds great. Two and a half million. ATH, baby, all time high. No, you can't sell. You got to hold on. Hold on to all those NFTs. You know what? This song convinced me to take all my money out of the bank, take it out of cash, worthless cash, put it all into NFTs, baby. We're all going to make it. Randy told me. Randy told me we're all going to make it, people. Dogecoin to the moon. Come rocket. Come rocket's going to hit a million dollars. Okay, people. I'm sorry to say, but that does it for this installment of the most cringe songs ever recorded. I don't know if we'll ever be able to top this one. This might be the single most cringe thing of all time. We'll find out. Join us next time for episode number two of the most cringe songs ever recorded. You do not want wee-wee in your mouth.